STV, your TV. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, televiewers of STV. Welcome to today's edition of the 1 p.m. newscast. Let's go straight to what the top stories are for this afternoon. Paul Bia's decree on the Sika train accident is still very much the big topic. The head of state, President Paul Bia, ordered that 1 billion French CFA be paid victims and their families. Meanwhile, the railway transport company, Camrai, takes the blame. Just ahead, we will revisit the unfortunate events of last October 2016. Also in today's newscast, we shall be looking at the shake-up at Ileka, where some top officials of the Center uh, Regional Office have been dismissed. This story, ladies and gentlemen, will be leading a host of others in today's newscast. Good afternoon once more. Thank you very much for uh, being with us. Let's go straight to the news and we begin with this information in brief. It is one of our top stories today. Findings of the Seca train wreck of October 21, 2016 have been released. That was last night in a communique signed by the Secretary General at the Presidency. High speed and non-respect of security norms by the rail Railway Transport Company camera have been advanced as the cause of the unfortunate accident. The head of state, President Paul Bia, has announced uh, the disbursement of one billion uh, from CFA to compensate families of uh, the incident. Also, there will be uh, the erection of a monument at the crash site to honor fallen victims. The head of state uh, also ordered that those responsible uh, be severely sanctioned. The report will be forwarded to judicial authorities for legal intents and purposes. On that same subject, we would like to uh, go back to uh, when it all happened, but first you remember that after that unfortunate incident on October 21, 2016, the President of the Republic had ordered for uh, the creation of a commission led by Prime Minister uh, Philemon Yang that would investigate and produce a report after a month. It is following this report that President Paul Bia is reacting with this uh, new decree. But now let's go back to that time when the accident happened. Chitan Sosi has more. President Paul Bia is due to receive results of findings by a commission of inquiry on the Ezeka train wreck this Friday, November 25. Chaired by Prime Minister Philemon Yang, the team created on October 25 was instructed by the head of state to investigate all aspects of the train disaster that claimed more than 80 lives and left hundreds injured within 30 days. The Yang Ezeka Commission, as it is codenamed, has been busy in its task admit criticisms from the press and civil society over its government's composition. About 20 people connected directly and indirectly with the incident have been grilled by the Commission, top on the list the Ministers of Transport and Public Works. The head of government himself on November 12, where he supervised the extraction of the four remaining coaches stuck in the valley. The motive behind the surprise visit, however, could not be unveiled to pressmen. Cameroonians are anxiously waiting for the results of the commission that will as well evaluate the management of the disaster and give a thorough inventory of how assistance to victims have been managed. Measures to prevent a repeat of the deadly crash will also be mapped out by the fact-finding team in its report. There are speculations that heads will roll, especially when the judicial inquiry coordinated by the Attorney General of the Central Regional Court of Appeal and Camreo's internal investigation will have reached President Paul Bia's office desk in Yaoundé. Just to precise that these reports were prepared following that unfortunate train uh, incident in October 2016. We are still back in time looking at what happened. It was a very sad day uh, for Cameroon when uh, 80 persons and more lost their lives at Iseka. Let's uh, once again look back at what happened. Corpses littered on the ground, some mutilated beyond recognition, debris of the wagon wreckage, and stranded survivors in shock paints the gruesome scene at the Zeka rail line. 
a Kamra Intercity train that left Yaoundé Friday at about 11 a.m. for Douala has crashed in Ezeka after it ran off the road course. The cause of the tragedy is yet to be established, but preliminary findings indicate that the locomotive was full beyond capacity. It is alleged that the train with an intake of 650 places had above 1,000 people on board. This triggered by the mass influx of passengers due to the collapse of a corvette at Matom on the National Road No. 3 linking Yaoundé to Douala. The heavily loaded wagons could not withstand the pressure from the rails which could have provoked the incident. At the moment, circulation on the Douala Yaoundé rail line has been cut off. Transport Minister Edgar Allen Mebengo has led a four-man delegation to the scene of the accident. Efforts have been made to ensure the safe transfer of survivors who are seeking safety from the forest where they are trapped. We want to talk something else, ladies and gentlemen. The head of state, President Paul Bia, has signed a decree appointing new divisional officers across the national territory. That was a few days ago. Now, following this uh, decree, expectations are growing amongst the uh, populations and the inhabitants of the various localities that are concerned. Our case study for today is uh, Douala 6, 2, and 3. We're looking at these municipalities and uh, looking at some of the problems that now await the new deals. John Paul Sama with details. Portable water shortage coupled with electricity failures are just a few problems which are plaguing the inhabitants of Manuka at the Douala 6 municipality. These are just a few of the challenges that await the new divisional officer for Douala 6, Besinga Eli Itone. Meanwhile, an uphill task of ensuring security reigns in the New Bell neighborhood awaits the newly appointed deal for Douala 2, Pija Didier. The insecurity that has gripped the people of New Bell, especially those at Gange with the recent turn of events in that area, the population will be hoping that Bija Didier would employ measures that will help improve the level of security at the Douala 2 municipality. Nuhu Bello on his part takes charge of a municipality in Douala 3 which has in recent months seen so many workers at the council revendicating due to unpaid salaries and poor working conditions. The new deal will have to put his feet firm on the ground to ensure that all these problems are looked into as well as the land disputes that always erupt at the Douala 3 municipality. These three new divisional officers appointed by a presidential decree Monday 22nd May to the Douala 6, Douala 2 and Douala 3 municipalities all have a daunting task awaiting them when they take office. Let's now talk about urban disorder in the Douala One Council area. Local authorities have been uh, furnishing efforts to curb this vice. The most recent uh, was uh, about a month ago, where a sensitization campaign was uh, carried uh, out to help inhabitants uh, curb urban disorder in this part of Douala. In this report that comes up, Mariana Chango gives us an evaluation of this campaign. She spoke with the supervisor in charge of urban disorder at the Douala One uh, municipality. Let's get her report. Haphazard parking on the highway, disrespect of road signs and parking in restricted areas are just a few cases of urban disorder faced by municipal authorities at the Douala One Council. Unlike the previous months, the issue of urban disorder was severe, but for the sensitization measures put in place last month by authorities of Douala One Municipality in a bid to evaluate the effectiveness of the sensitization campaign so far, the project supervisor, Etuke uh -huh. Muel, says, Euh, la réception de la volonté de Douala Premier à vouloir éradiquer le désordre. The situation is improving. The sensitization campaign, which was put up one and a half months ago, was aimed at eradicating urban disorder in the Douala One municipality. The sensitization was done by mobilization of the population and information was circulated through the media. In streets like Bonakwa Mwang and Hotel Londe in Aqua, poor parking constitutes the highest urban disorder, paving way for urban congestion. In the days ahead, they will not spare any vehicle or drivers 
who we violate the rules of the highway. He also warns against store operators who circulate their second-hand goods along the roadside, thereby occupying space and blocking pedestrian passage. While waiting for the proper implementation of this sensitization campaign, the issue of urban disorder remains a problem in most parts of the city. Five top officials of the Central Regional Office of Ilekam have been dismissed with immediate replacement. This follows a reshuffle of uh, personnel uh, which has seen Michelle Mekeme installed at uh, the Central Regional uh, as the Centre Regional Delegate of Ilekam. Larinette Apagie now looks at the reasons behind this shake up at the Central Regional Office of Cameroon's electoral body uh, Ilekam or elections organized in the body Elecam. Let's get that report. Power has changed hands. When it comes to coordinating the activities of elections Cameroon in the central region and the change has effectively begun this 23rd of May 2017, starting with the new central regional delegate of Elecam, Michelle Mekeme. She has been officially installed by the Director General of Elections Cameroon, Abdullahi Babale, at the Central Regional Delegation of Elecam, away from cameras. Michelle Mekeme, who replaces Josephine Angel Esama, has also installed the new Fundi Divisional Branch Head, Ehongo Besala Leopold, who has taken over from Fuda Atangana. At the level of Elecam's Central Regional Council branches, the Council Branch Head of Yaoundé 1, Two, four, and five have also been changed by the Director General of Elecam upon approval of the Electoral Board in a communique released on the 19th of May 2017. At the Yaoundé One Council Branch, Helen Onanangono replaces Ube Ekongolo. Cyril Valentine Befe is the new Council Branch head for Yaoundé Two after Atanganawabo. Yaoundé Four has also welcomed Joseph Amba who replaces Serge Constant Ekani, while Bipan Marie Claire Ebanda has given way to Blandin Lucien Mengu at the Yaoundé 5 Council branch of Elecam Centre Region. Top authorities of Elections Cameroon have justified the replacement of the Centre Regional Delegate, the Mfundi Divisional Branch Head, four Council branch heads, as an urgent necessity to improve on the quality of service rendered in the Centre Region. However, the newly appointed Elecam coordinators in Centre Region are coming in with fresh minds ready to achieve the goals of Elecam one year to elections in the country. Let's now turn our attention to the national chairman of the Cameroon uh, National Democratic Party, Professor Mulupen George, who has used the uh, just celebrated National Day to preach unity between Anglophones and Francophones in the country. He was speaking recently in a press conference, as you now tell us, Bertine Ngwe. As the countdown to the 2018 presidential elections in Cameroon draws closer, political parties are intensifying campaign strategies. The national chairman of the Cameroon National Democratic Party, CNDP, has used the occasion of the National Day celebrations in the Northwest region to preach a message of unity amongst Anglophones and Francophones. He was speaking during a press briefing organized at the party's headquarters. He also called on Cameroonians to vote for him as the only solution to the economic crisis of the country. During this press briefing, pressmen and women raised worries on... Oh, if it happens that the <coughs> presidential majority, will you join them? The chairman says... I am out to stand for the president of this country. I am not out to join with any party. The Cameroon National Democratic Party, chaired by Professor Mulu Pen George, has a slogan, Solving Unsolvable Issues. It was born in October last year and has branches in all ten regions of the country. The party as well boycotted the National Day celebrations in the northwest and southwest regions of the country. I pay don't you think of an anglophone that we will play, we will help you like a country. And let us now take you down to the southwest region of Cameroon, precisely at the Kumbatu uh, municipal area, which has been plagued by a number of problems. Amongst them, the lack of equipment for road construction and waste disposal. Now, the mayor of this municipality says this uh, is hampering development 
efforts. He was speaking at a recently held council session. Daniela Neba with the rest of that story. The mayor of Kumbatu Council, Martin Forcha Dobengang, has disclosed that the non-availability of equipment for road construction and maintenance, as well as those for refuge disposal, are the major problems the country is facing. First, we don't have uh, even as far as equipment for road maintenance are concerned, we don't even have one. And then they are very expensive for one week. We want to hire a greater than one week for margin. It's almost two million, one million eight hundred and ninety something thousand. And at the end, you are forced to pay allowance to the child of the great. So you will not imagine a council that for 10 years existence, nothing to boast of, not even, not even one, not even a greater or a cheaper. As far as garbage collection is concerned, again, we don't even have any cheaper. He was speaking on May 22nd during the Kumbatu Council session meant to adopt the 2016 budget. The ceremony that took place at the Kumbatu Council chambers was chaired by the first assistant SGO from the mayor, Veglin Epolewane. According to the mayor, the non-availability of these machines counts for why some roads in the municipality have not been maintained and why the council is unable to manage waste. On her part, the first assistant SDO noted that the 48.8% realization rate is not satisfactory. She called on the mayor and his team to put in more effort. She however commended the 61.01% spent in investments, which is the best in the division. Some of the projects realized in 2016 include the construction of a slaughterhouse, the construction of a livestock market, the construction of culverts, obtained loan for the construction of Kusala market, the construction of six kilometers of roads and a host of others. In other news, stakeholders involved in the creation of enterprises in the country have been schooled on new uh, tools and procedures in creating enterprises, especially online. The two-day seminar, which opened in Douala uh, Tuesday, is the second phase of the training after that, uh, which took place in Yaoundé. Darling, Fetcher. Ameliorating procedures of creating companies in Cameroon is the goal of this training geared towards the reinforcement of capacities and managerial skills of staff and actors involved in the creation of enterprises in the country. The objective of this seminar is to reinforce the capacities of our staff. We are in a quest for performance, so we need to improve the procedure of creating enterprises. It will also enable our staff to master all texts published by the government. The small and medium-sized enterprises promotion agency consists of over 15,000 enterprises created in about seven years. Since 2016, new tools and innovations have been introduced to facilitate the creation of more enterprises, notably online. To create your company online, there is a website which you have to open fill the required information and report to the CFCE in order to submit your original documents. These tools, according to experts, could improve the business climate and attract investors. The, the, increase, the improvement of okay, the investment climate in Cameroon as well as the economic goal of the small and medium enterprise. Okay, because if we create the enterprise, if we have a better climate, investment climate, okay, we are sure okay, that the national and the foreign enterprise will come and invest in Cameroon. The training, which ends on Wednesday, May 24, 2017, comes after that of Yaoundé, which group stakeholders from the east, north, south, center, Adamawa, and far north regions involved in the creation of enterprises in Cameroon. And let's now talk about this issue concerning the Fulani and Barrera communities in Cameroon. An NGO is being accused of allegedly receiving aid from the international community on the basis that Fulanese and Barreras are a marginalized minority. Larinette Apache, please give us the explanations. These 90 adults representing the seven divisions of the Northwest region have assembled in Yaoundé, the core of the nation, to rebuke activities of the non-governmental organization that pronounces to be the representative of the Mbororo community known as Boscuda. They are talking, they are based, they base their facts on minority, marginalization, 
and uh, indigenous community. In Cameroon, the Bororo Fulani are up over 2.5 million, which means we are not a minority group in Cameroon. So if you see the right to NGOs saying we are a people like the pygmies, the last, the right to the United Nations telling uh, them about how they are marginalized in Cameroon, the, the human rights abuse in Cameroon, the government is not taking care of us. They are even trying to make the funds to, 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 to give land to the Mbororo so that they own land. That's creating conflict. Leaders of the Fulani Mbororo community say, Judging Manu Jidado, who is the president of Boscuda, and his members have not rendered account for aids received from the international community to the adults who are the custodians and gateway into the community. They steal money from NGOs and keep it in their pocket. They come and deceive them, they take the name of the adults and, and, and play them cut. They tell adults that they will do something for them, but nothing. Because I don't know them. In the northwest in Samba, as I'm Samba, I'm the only Lamido of Samba, second class chief in, in the Fulani of the Rose. I don't know them. I only heard that they are going to take money from NGOs, buy their cars, build their houses, deceive the adults union. After the union of adults in Yaoundé, May 22nd, Boscuda's executive members have remained silent despite attempts made so far. Health, according to statistics uh, are revealed by the WHO, about 6,000 infants in Cameroon are born with sickle cell. Now, the alarming figures have caused uh, uh, medics to advise couples to first uh, carry out the electrophoresis blood test before procreating. More with Darling Fijo. Statistics have revealed that about 6,000 infants in Cameroon are born with sickle cell anemia. 280,000 in sub-Saharan Africa and over 300,000 in the world each year. Cameroon, every year, is more than 25% of Cameroon population is a carrier. That means people who are AS of sickle cell. They are carrier of the gene, but they are not showing any symptom. Disease of the blood? Sickle cell anemia caused by an abnormal type of hemoglobin claims the lives of 50 to 75 percent of children living with the disease before the age of five. Deaths which could be avoided through early screening. The mortality is very high, so it is proven that early start screening and early treatment improve. The manifestation and someone may grow up without knowing the complications of the disease. That's the direct benefit of offering an early screening. This hereditary disease can however be prevented. The first tool is information and this information is about the history of your family. Is there any individual and that would uh, drive you to screening and the screening is a very simple blood treatment examination, and which, which is called elect, uh, electrophoresis of hemoglobin. Medics insist that sickle cell anemia is neither a curse nor a fatality and is in no way related to witchcraft. And with proper care and support, persons living with sickle cell can live a much longer life. Before we end today's newscast, uh, match day 15 in the MTN Elite One Championship continues today in Stadia around the national territory. You would note that Aiden Spohr is still sitting top on the table. John Paul Summer. Match day 15 in the MTN Elite One Championship will see second place star Renard of Melon measuring soccer strength with Unispo of Bafang. League leaders Aiden Spohr of the Lakey are at home to Colum FC the Sud. Rasang Football Club will welcome the Brazilians of Bepanda Lezastro Football Club. Dragon FC will be looking to pick up some vital points away from home when they come up against Bambutu's Football Club of Buddha. In Douala, New Stars FC were battling to quit the drop zone with just one win in 14 games played. We'll be welcoming fourth place Apeche Somfu.
Young Sport Academy of Bamenda will look to improve their points tally when they play away to Egle Royal of the Menwa. Le Mekok Mengunda Canon Sportif of Yaoundé locks horns with future FC of Jiko Banjun. Meanwhile, defending champions UMS of Loom takes on Lyon Blessé of Futuni, who are yet to record a win in the championship. At the top of the table, Eden Sport sits on the first spot with 29 points, closely followed by Stad Renard of Melong and UMS of Loom with 26 and 24 points respectively. Rock bottom is Leon Blessé of Futuni with 7 points after 14 games played, with new stars of Douala and Canon Sportif of Yaoundé occupying the other two relegations. Gentlemen, brings us to the end of this edition of the 1 p.m. newscast on STV. Thank you very much for your kind attention. For myself and the rest of the team, it's goodbye. God bless. TV, your TV.